Estamos en Laza, Chicago, mayo del 2014, en el stand de Claxo TV, con Frederick Ugla. Frederick es director del Instituto de Estudios de América Latina de la Universidad de Estocolmo. Frederick, thank you for the interview with the Claxo TV. Which was the beginning for you personally? to be involved in Latin American issues, Latin American studies, or, Latin, or cooperation with Latin American countries? Mm. Yeah, I think uh, I, I am a child of the uh, early 70s, and, uh, and for me, the image of Latin America in those times was one of, uh, uh, of interest. There was a lot of, uh, of talk about Latin America, and, and obviously this talk was often one of, uh, uh, of traumas, of, of, uh, of military coups, of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, violation and this inspired, uh, I think, a uh, moral se sense, which was not only about me, it was, uh, I think, of everybody in, in Europe or the rest of the world at that time. It was a preoccupation with, with, uh, um, with the themes of Latin America. And then, as I started studying at university, it was a different time in Latin America. It was a time of democratization, it was a time of, uh, of hope, of, uh, of seeing a new beginning. And, uh, and it was still a time where uh, there were moral certainties to a certain degree. And as any young person, I think I was uh, appealed to this. I had studied Spanish in, uh, in high school and uh, I went to Spain, studied, and, and then I got a scholarship to go to Chile. In uh, 93 this was. Um, it was the first time I went to Latin America. I worked at Flaxo uh, for half a year with uh, Thomas Mollian. Mm -hmm. the social scientist yeah. and uh, uh, and it was a very fascinating time and for me coming outside of Sweden this was uh, it was not the first time I've been outside of Sweden but outside of Europe and uh, encountering a, a reality that was uh, similar yet very different and very you appealing. said you use the word moral mm. what does it mean moral in uh, political or academic Terms. No, I think uh, political, personal terms, really. That, oh, personal, uh, of yes, course, yes. And, uh, and it was m mostly that, and I think that, uh, of course, and uh, what I would like to highlight for that is that uh, this was a time when, when there were perhaps more moral certainties, it was easy to feel part of, uh, you know, of the good side as opposed yeah. to, the, to the bad side, and I think this affected and made it, uh, if not more appealing, but, but, uh, but a stronger sense of urgency and of uh, preoccupation with, uh, and a sense of uh, wanting to participate in, uh, in this conflict between, uh, um, between a side that had uh, represented democracy, human rights, uh, a human side, and, and a side uh, intended on oppressing this. In one side you had death and in the other side you have life in those times. Sorry? You had death mm. or life in those yes, times. Yes, of course. Yes. It's, uh, it was so so in that moral sense, uh, uh, mm. meant life. Mm. Yes, exactly. And, uh, and, it was, uh, and I think that this has always been important in the preoccupations, in the perspective that uh, well, the rest of the world, Europe in particular, and perhaps Sweden in particular, has had uh, with regard to, to Latin America and has, uh, has helped to orient uh, our Swedish perspective towards Latin America. A lot of American exiles went to Sweden during the period of the different dictatorships in Latin America, mm. in uh, Argentina, in Chile, in Uruguay, etc., etc., etc. The exiles were important in the cooperation and in the increasing importance of the Latin American issues in Sweden. Yes, they, they were. I think that there had been an interest in Latin America, but there had been an interest very much distant. The, the institute that I'm the director of was founded in the 1950s and with a view of stimulating debate, stimulating knowledge about Latin America. But it was knowledge uh, oriented, for instance, towards Swedish companies that were looking for new, uh -huh. new places to, to invest. And was very much based on Latin America as the far, uh, far away, the remote place. Now, with um, the, the, the exiles, the, the migrants co coming to, uh, to Europe, obviously Latin America became much closer to Sweden and it, um, it stopped being only the remote, the exotic place and became much more of a uh, common day presence. In, uh, it was part in of the day to day life. I think so. If not Latin America, then at least Latin American viewpoints, perspectives, uh -huh. and, and stories mm -hmm. in that sense. And also, the time I'm talking about, the 70s, 80s, also saw um, cu cultural uh, influences from Latin America to a larger extent, literary, musical, uh, and other aspects, which was also a new phenomenon. So, so Latin America became more present in general, I would say, mm -hmm. in these years. Mm -hmm. Which is the main basis of uh, the cooperation between Sweden and Latin American countries mm -hmm. for Sweden? Um, 
if we talk about cooperation, perhaps it's, better, it's good to separate different parts here. We have development okay. cooperation that has okay. been a, a mainstay and aimed to, to, to develop well, to, to jointly cooperate for the development of Latin America. This has been a very important part of, of the Swedish-Latin American relations, uh, beginning in the early 70s and um, at, at one point it stretched over most of the continent, perhaps not Brazil so much, but, but most of the Andean countries, Central America, there were important Swedish cooperation programs in the academic field, but also themes such as health, education. Uh, and I think that this was very important to start to build up an, a relationship that went beyond the, the personal context and, and mm -hmm. to, to create an official role for Sweden in Latin America. Um, this has since diminished, we can talk more about that. But it should be said that when this occurs, it also enters into a relation that was mu much longer. So the diplomatic relations between Sweden and, and Latin America dates back to the early 19th century. And, uh, and it's difficult to talk about cooperation in those terms, although there were some instances of Swedish gun running uh, for, uh, for the independence armies in, uh, independent, uh, independence armies in, uh, in the beginning of the uh, well, in the liberation struggles from Spain, all that ended due to Russian pressure. Um, but, but then, uh, in terms of uh, diplomatic cooperation, there has always been a diplomatic presence from both sides, although in terms of cooperation it's difficult to talk about much. We can talk about, if not cooperation, then economic relationships, which yeah. has also been important in Swedish, uh, Swedish relations to, to Latin America. And uh, Swedish companies started investing in Latin America more than 100 years ago. Companies such as LM Ericsson in the field of telephones, Scania, uh, trucks, um, and others have become very important. Uh, and been important. It was at one point said that Sao Paulo was the most important industrial city of Sweden counted the number of workers within Swedish companies. Mm -hmm. This was in the 60s and, and the 70s. Um, so I think that uh, for, for Sweden, cooperation with Latin America has always been a potential. It's not always been, uh, been made real, but, but it's, it's been there. It's kind of had its ups and its downs. I think we are currently in a period when we are searching for new paradigms or something new to build this on, because development cooperation has diminished. One can question the, the reasons for this. It's uh, possibly due to a sense of, uh, I wouldn't say of, of less interest in Latin America, but uh, more interest in other, other parts of the world mm -hmm. and a sense of other urgency there. And also due to the fact that Latin America has more resources of its own to, to, to perform development. Um, this diminishes relations in, in general. And the question is whether the relations can be built on other foundations. I think with, uh, with personal contacts, the migrant population, yeah. back and forth, academic contacts, um, the, the diplomatic contacts uh, and travels and other, I think there is a ground for, for developing a more a relationship that I hope will be equally strong and perhaps more equal as well. Claxo has a very strong relationship with uh, SIDA, ASDI mm. in, yes. in mm. Spanish. Which was the importance of uh, SIDA in this history of cooperation, of this history of no, collaboration? Uh, it's, been, it's been very important. Actually, CEDA, as, the, as it exists today, has, um, is the conglomerate of uh, four different organizations. And uh, there was a previous one, SARIC, or as it was called, that handled most of the cooperation until the mid-90s. So when we talk about CEDA, Swedish Development Corporation, we are really talking about what was handled by, by SARIC before. And I say this in case any of you uh, uh, wonders mm -hmm. what happened to SARIC. Uh, I think this has been important uh, and it's, it's, it reflects to a certain extent the fact that in Swedish um, cooperation with Latin America, in Swedish um, um, thinking about Latin America, there's always been a prominence and, and a stress on academic relationships and uh, I think there are a number of reasons for this. Uh, there is a, uh, is a recognition of um, the, the good social scientists and scientists that exist in Latin America, many of whom came as exiles to Sweden and, and helped construct academic mm -hmm. contacts. It also is testimony to, uh, um, to the fact uh, or to a view of, uh, of Latin America's development problems of having, uh, um, let's say, I wouldn't say technocratic, but, but rational solutions. It, it stems from the same um, set of mind as the Cepal, for instance, and other, that, that there are here ways of, of thinking that can contribute, or ways of academic knowledge that can contribute to Latin America's de development. And I think that this is a, it's a very um, forceful school of, of thought, and it's been very important, not only um, in Swedish cooperation, but in Latin America in general. It's the, the thinking of the, of the Cepal.
municipal and the prohibition mm -hmm. of the yeah. this whole period. Well, has it, what has it to do with the relation with the issues like uh, the lack of equality in the world? Mm. I think this is uh, fundamental. It's, uh, Swedish Development Corporation has, uh, is oriented towards um, working, bettering the situation of, of people living in, in poverty. And, uh, and uh, this is uh, fundamental. And for that, it's both needed uh, scientific foundations, agriculture and health ed education, and also attention to issues more of social science. Democratization, mm, attention have to, to modern You have to know it very well. You have to know yes, the problems. So, yes, yeah, so there, there is a need for knowledge in development uh -huh. cooperation that can that cannot be underestimated. And uh, um, at the same time, we know that poverty reduction has happened in Latin America over the last decade, so the last decade fundamentally, has been perhaps not due to increased innovation, but, but rather to um, high prices for, for commodities and, and other things. Yeah. I think the challenge for Latin America is still to increase productivity, to, to make use of innovation, and uh, so it's, a, it's a still a, a pressing problem that requires more of cooperation within the sciences and the social sciences. So it's, it's by no means... Which uh, is the key point of... Uh, Sweden's social uh, equality? Um, that, that's a very good, good point. It, it depends on how far you want to go back. Uh, some, uh, uh, some authors want to go back to the 16th century and talk about uh, the old peasant communes and the, the, the equality as a culture of equality. Others go back to the 19th century and development and trade unions. Others go back to the 1930s and the agreements, uh -huh. the political agreements between uh, government and opposition at that time. Um, if you look at it only economically, you would say that the, it's, the basis is a social protection system that relies on a high degree of labor market participation. Mm -hmm. uh, and for large groups, the, the, pension, uh, the pension age in Sweden is relatively high, there is a, a high degree of, of women working and there's a generally high degree of economic participation, which allows for the collection of social duties that can be used to uh, to, um, to, to, to promote social equality and also uh, to the fact that employment is, is key in this, uh, this respect. But exactly where the model starts, I think, is, is more di difficult to, to pinpoint. Yeah. It's still, it is a model that is now often said to be in crisis and uh, which has, uh, faces uh, uh, demographic problems, certain political problems. But it, well, it has political and social consensus. Uh, yes, I think there it is. It still uh, has. Yes, uh, that, that's, that's quite clear. On, uh, on Sunday, that is the day after tomorrow, uh, there is uh, the European uh, Parliament elections. And yeah. if you look at what every Swedish uh, party, I think, now is saying, is that this Swedish model has to be co conserved, with or without, the, or within or, uh, or in opposition to the European Union. And I think that if you only look at political debate now in Sweden, Head of the European Parliament elections, yes. but also head of uh, parliamentary elections in, in September, there seems to be a high degree of consensus about the, the social protection model. Then, how is to be performed? It's uh, there's a certain differences between the parties, but but uh, the overall idea or ideal of uh, of um, egalitarian model is not in question in, in Sweden. In that sense, in, in uh, which part of uh, duty has the Sweden cooperation? With, for example, Latin America, mm. uh, which part of uh, interest has it? Mm. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> yes. Can you divide mm. in external politics mm. duties and interests? Um, I, I don't. I, I don't think you can actually. I, I you think, can. Uh, no, I, I think that uh, it's difficult to s separate it. Okay. You, you could in certain areas say, for instance, that you have development cooperation that is uh, tied, as we would say, meaning I, um, it's a, if CEDA were to give uh, what do I know Peru. Uh, 20 million, but only to buy Swedish trucks. Well, then you would easily say that it's a, it's a high self-interest. Yeah. Now, Swedish Development Corporation is among the most untied, meaning that that is not given with this uh, um, this uh, or demands of, uh, of reciprocal buys or, or only using it for Swedish operation. Um, and uh, that would indicate that this, it comes more out of a duty rather than, than an interest. Even so, there are other interests. We do not need to be at odds with, uh, with senses of, of duty. We live in a common world. We, we know that uh, what happens in Latin America will affect Sweden one way or another. And, uh, and it's... Uh, an, an equality in the world, in which mm. sense it would affect or affects Sweden? 
yeah, it's not only inequality, I, I should say, but, but, but um, to, take, to take one example is that we can see how Latin America is not hugely important for Swedish companies, but, but yes. uh, at least some 2% of our foreign trade goes to Latin America, and a lot mm -hmm. of this is oriented towards consumer goods, and yeah. if demand goes down, that will affect uh, uh, the, the Swedish, uh, Swedish export potential. Uh, we also see it in, uh, in mi migration, migration patterns, and uh, how that can be related to the situation in, in the countries. And we can also see it in perhaps uh, more obviously global issues. Uh, I heard one figure which I haven't checked, but that, uh, according to this figure, uh, the largest reception of Norwegian, not Swedish, but Norwegian development cooperation today is Brazil. Uh -huh. Rather surprising. And this is because the Norwegians are supposedly funding the so-called red initiatives, that is to buy up large uh, tracts of, uh, um, of rainforest to protect them against the deforestation. Now, obviously the protection against deforestation is important in facing global warming and, uh, and climate change and, and shows mm -hmm. that whatever happens, if somebody cuts down a tree in the Amazonas, it will have a small but yet effect on everybody on the globe, including the Swedes and Norwegians in the, in the remote north. In terms of welfare in general, are you following up the goals of the millennium? And yes. then the post mm. uh, 15? Mm. Yes. Now, Sweden has been quite active in this. Um, I cannot really tell you exactly where that work stands, but I think that in Latin America it's obvious that a number of the goals ha has been reached and, uh, and even mm. surpassed. And the question now is more, as you say, we indicated yeah. the, the post uh, 2015 and what should be indicated here. Now, it's not for me to say what, what should be the the outcome of, of any talks that Sweden and Latin America has here, but I think there is room to stress common interests or common ideals between Sweden and Latin America in terms of uh, egalitarian structure, freedom of cor from corruption, accountable government, and and move. Uh, obviously not disregarding the very pressing problems uh, involved in the Millennium Goals which relate to uh, education, health, sanitation and these aspects, but, but add to them or rather emphasize also issues of, of good governments, of, uh, um, of, um, of let's say, uh, adherence to common values of, of human dignity and of the kinds that we started by talking about. I ask that because a lot of people, a lot of the, inside, within the leadership, in Latin America, and curiously or not, within the leadership of the IMF, for mm. example, are talking now about inequality mm. as an issue. Mm. In the past, it mm. was impossible to yes. dream that mm. uh, some people uh, would talk about mm. it. No, it is. Why? A, say, yeah. I think that, that could, I, I wish I, I could answer it. I, I think that this. Um, I would guess, but this is uh, yes. anything uh, okay. than an uh, educated guess. I think that um, the, the idea of a trickle-down uh, uh, relief of poverty, meaning that uh, economic growth would eventually present a situation in which everybody comes better off, has shown its potentially in certain countries, but a number of countries we see increased social tensions and we see in increased uh, de demands placed on, uh, placed on governments. And uh, mm -hmm. there is, a, uh, in that sense, a recognition that uh, economic growth needs to be coupled well, both to attention to environmental goals, but also to, to social goals and to social equality. Maybe this is a reflection of the fact that Latin America is today a continent in which most countries are, if not uh, all, are, uh, are ruled democratically. Yes. Uh, and the fact that a democratic rule they cannot disregard. For the first time, the, uh, for the first time at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yes, and, <laughs> uh, and broadly spread. And, uh, um, the, any leader who wants to base his or her power on the, the democratic ballot needs mm -hmm. to, to care what uh, the situation of their uh, um, of their fellow citizens, really, and, mm -hmm. uh, and try, try to better them. I do think that's the case. Also, um, I think that looking generally, there, uh, I think that to, to progress between uh, to progress in poverty uh, alleviation, and Latin America has done very much in this regard uh, in the last last de decades. One also needs to look more towards. Um, I wouldn't say perhaps structural determinants, but determ institutional um, determinants, failings with regard to the economy, to the social systems. And this is not something that can be done only by handing out uh, um, tra cash transfers uh -huh. or something the, like that. Uh, the tax system also. The yeah, tax system, as we see in Chile today, which is discussed in a number of, of places, both the tax system in general, but also the collection of tax duties. Exactly. And, uh, and as I said, I think that in the area of uh, 
um, uh, administration of uh, public administration, transparency. I think that these are values that are uh, are obviously very prominent in the Latin American debate, and also values which Sweden stre stresses. And I hope there will be uh, opportunities to both develop joint action on this and, uh, and for me as a researcher and, and talking to the Claxo TV to, to develop joint, uh, joint investigation and research on this. Craig, mm -hmm. thank you very much for thank the Thank you interview. very much, Martin. Mm. Craig Ugla de la Universidad de Estocolmo en Claxo TV, en Lhasa, Chicago, mayo 2014.